There are people that are just always going to be little, and that's okay. I mean, we need little businesses. There are people that are destined to not just be little. They're destined to be bigger. So far, not impressed, but shoot. And my friend laughed and goes, yeah, whoever I am, this shouldn't even acknowledge my friend. He's like, what are you, the first lady? From my knowledge of her is she likes the engagement. She likes the interaction. She's always said that she never checks for what people say about her online, and she really doesn't care if she receives hate because at the end of the day, it's kind of benefiting her. That's the problem with most people is they don't know me. I drove into the garage My famous bestie, bestie She picked me up in a Porsche We fled the scene and no one cared Cause I'm fucking high I don't care what you wear But for me you brought a monogram underwear I do what I wanna Hit the love in the spot Fuck me in the sun Fuck me in the sun Fuck me in the sun Fuck me in I am Maximilian Romer. Hello, I'm NADC. And I'm Jakey. Welcome, Welcome to, to Deep, Deep Dive, Dive, a show where we explore told and untold stories on the first of every month. This month we wanted to give you a little something extra. On one of the most interesting stories we've ever come across. Period. Teresa Romer. So please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle. Because this is going to be a ride full of twists, turns, lies, and, and robbery. robbery. We just want to take a moment to thank you guys for 10,000 subscribers. Your support on our passion project means the world to us. For real, y'all. Thank you so, so much, but the wait is over. Let's get into it. Teresa Romer came from humble beginnings, growing up on a farm in the middle of nowhere, Nebraska. She started working on the family farm, milking cows from the age of six years old. Well, because we didn't go to town all the time, I came down with rheumatic fever four different times as a child, which gave me a heart murmur. Was told I would never be a normal little girl, that I would have to stay inside a lot. I'd be sick a lot and I would definitely never probably have children because it would be too taxing on my heart. And I went against those odds. From the age of 16, Teresa dreamed of being famous. Someday I'm gonna live in a house just like that. I'm gonna be famous. I don't know when it's gonna happen. That was when I was 16. And with a strong work ethic from the farm, she would stop at nothing to achieve her goals of fame and fortune. By the age of 29, Teresa was divorced from her husband, was completely broke, and had two kids to take care of. This is when Teresa started teaching aerobics, she competed in bodybuilding competitions, and she became a certified personal trainer. She saved up, and within two years, she purchased her first fitness club, Body by Design. It wasn't long before she owned multiple health clubs. Teresa ended up selling her chain of fitness clubs clubs becoming a self-made millionaire. Now let's fast forward to the early 2000s when Teresa met Lamar Romer in a Texas church. Lamar Romer, former pro tennis player, owns multiple oil and gas companies, making him rich rich. In 2008, they married and the chemistry is still going strong to this day. Thursday. What happens on Thursdays? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marriage did not stop Teresa from going after her dream of being famous. In 2010, Teresa won Mrs. Texas UA. The UA is for the United America pageant. While it's not as commercially recognized as Miss America or Miss USA pageants, it's still an awesome pageant honoring women of all ages and backgrounds, single or married, first time contestants or pageant pros, teens and grandmas. This was just the beginning for Teresa. In 2011, she climbed Mount Kilimanjaro with a team raising $100,000 for charity. Also in 2011, she was a co-author of a book. Teresa and her co-author Kim Jackson ended up coming out with a pillow called Pillow Talk. Hey, Hannah, I thought you got something special for tonight. I, I don't see it anywhere. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Oh, yeah. Shh. 
Every girl has her secrets. In 2012, she launched Signature Truffles. In 2013, she came out with the True and Real Candles. In 2015, Teresa launched her own clothing line. We're going to bring out a fall couture line for Teresa Romer True and Real. And I've teamed up with Lucho. They're going to be doing a shoe line for Teresa Romer also for True and Real. Today, Teresa is still selling the pillow, rebranded as the Stash Pillow. You can clearly see as he focuses around the room, we have cases and cases and cases and cases of them. Unfortunately, none of these business ventures gave Teresa the notoriety that she has always chased. But finally, in 2014, Teresa Romer started going viral. Houston is home to some seriously wealthy people. If Lamar and Teresa are rich, rich, then some of these people in Houston society are rich, 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 rich. We are talking oil tycoons and old money. Teresa was new money in their eyes and the new kid on the Woodlands block, a rich area just north of Houston. She was trying to make a name for herself and fit in with the Houston socialites. On June 30th, 2014, Neiman Marcus made a blog post on Teresa's glamorous 3,000 square foot closet that started to garner a lot of attention. Houston began to learn of Teresa's name as article after article got released on what was being dubbed the world's largest closet. Just like that, Teresa and her claim to fame were going viral. While Teresa was loving the attention her closet was getting, it also came with controversy and mass amounts of criticism. The Neiman Marcus blog, which is no longer available, had quite a few what Teresa calls Teresa haters in the comment section. One comment from a local said Teresa was fake and was building all of this up to be on reality TV. Some of the worst comments come from I am Maximilian Romer, Teresa's stepson, who was in his 30s. Teresa and Maximilian Romer made news when Teresa filed a defamation suit against him. According to the suit, Maximilian had been harassing Teresa with online comments and blogs after he was kicked out of the Romer household. But they tried everything in their power to take me down. In 2014, I had to hire a lawyer, spend $40,000 to literally get this troll off the internet. They did end up settling the suit shortly after it was filed and coming to an agreement. However, what is very strange is just days after the lawsuit was filed, the world's largest closet made national headlines once again. Imagine, if you will, a closet like none other, broken into and burglarized days after we were given an up-close look. Like Violet, you know? That was Teresa Romer talking about the heist that was all captured on surveillance video. According to Teresa, the thief got away with one million in jewelry and designer items. The closet invasion takes a really, really, and I mean really strange turn. The thief ended up calling Teresa. So then a week after the robbery, he decides to try to extort me for half a million dollars, which most of you don't know because it was never released to you because it was under police investigation, which still is. So he's like, well, if I can't get rid of her stuff, I'll just sell it back to her and get a half a million dollars for it. And so we set up a sting operation and everything failed. So that's when he decided to say, hey, I'm just gonna ruin your reputation. I'm just gonna ruin your name. I'm just gonna tell the world everything's fake. The thief got in touch with the Houston press using a voice modulator. All the items that were taken were fake. They asked this person, how can they prove that they really were the burglar? Malazel says he received the items Friday in a simple envelope. It was about 10 to 15 pieces of a jewelry and a watch. He turned that envelope over to the Houston police, who say that Romer has now confirmed that some of the contents are indeed hers. People and news outlets could not stop talking about the thief that would actually risk getting caught in order to mail stolen goods back in an attempt to hurt Teresa Romer's reputation. And with that, rumors started flying. People thought maybe Teresa staged the robbery to file an insurance claim. Another theory was that Matt Maximilian was the one who robbed the infamous closet in an attempt to expose his evil stepmother, in his eyes, as a fake. Theories aside, we will never truly know because the bizarre thief was never caught. With the robbery making Teresa's closet even more famous, Teresa was one step closer to reality TV stardom. She used the closet to get interviews and news segments, she held charity parties in the closet, she even used it to help launch her YouTube channel. The closet is more than just a she cave, it is a stepping stone to fame. 
Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. How is everyone? I hope everyone is well. I hope you are living and thriving your best life. In today's video, we are going to do a react to Teresa Roma. It is something on her channel. It has 7,750 views. Uh, and it is called The Help. We call the woodlands the bubble because it's this fairy tale world. It's kind of Orange County on steroids in South Texas. The women of the woodlands are a breed all their own. I always want the best. I want more than anyone else has. It's my little castle. Lamar and Teresa expect perfection and I want to give it to them. I tell her, if I have to do your job and my job, then you're no good to me. Since the beginning of amassing her wealth, Teresa Romer has always wanted fame, specifically reality TV fame. She's even gone as far as to start her own reality show called The Help in 2012. It appeared to be centered around her mansion staff running around and doing things for her, and they would get in drama and conflama, but everything would work out in the end. Think Restaurant Impossible or Cake Boss, but with Teresa as the star client of every episode. They even filmed a pilot for this show. And in 2013, she even boasted a cable network was picking the show up. She couldn't give direct details due to an alleged confidentiality agreement, but things were looking up for the show. But we never heard of the help again, and as of 2020, it seems to be dead in the water. In 2012, Teresa also tried her luck for a brand new unnamed reality show that she auditioned for with a friend. Believe it or not, I don't know if you can tell by looking at us, we are competitive. I mean, we might be pretty, you know, former Mrs. Texas and former model. <laughs> But we can get down and dirty and we are competitive. We will do what it takes to win. Then, from 2013 to 15, everything was dead in the water. She didn't get cast on any reality shows and at this point, Teresa had tried her best, time and time again to get on TV, but to no avail. Then, 2015 hit, and something remarkable happened. A Missouri-based production company put out a casting call stating, We are looking to cast five local housewives that have very interesting storylines. Any type of scenario is accepted if you feel that it will make you stand out from the rest and keep the audience eager to tune into your life week after week. Now, the Housewives franchise has become a phenomenon across the globe. Each different franchise of the series documents five to six housewives living their upper-class life. And it seemed as though Teresa felt this was made for her. And to be honest, it was. There are always one or two stars from each franchise, and most of those stars are entrepreneurial women with huge personalities. And with Teresa being a well-known figure in the Houston area, she was pretty much a shoe-in for the first season. So what happened? Well, rumors spread that they were filming The Real Housewives of Houston and Dallas at the same time, and allegedly the Bravo producers just liked the Dallas franchise better. Andy Cohen confirmed this in an interview saying, you know what, we did cast in Houston a couple times, we just never nailed it. I think Houston would be great, but I think now that we have Dallas, I think we're good. And in 2016, The Real Housewives of Dallas premiered to much fanfare, leaving The Real Housewives of Houston as just a memory, and Teresa's dreams of fame in the dust. I had no support, you know, like she probably just thought I'm just some little kid dreaming, you know, but in my head, I'm like, someday I'm going to live in a house just like that. I'm going to be famous. I don't know when it's going to happen. That was when I was 16. I don't care how many people told me that's ridiculous. Oh, what are you going to do? How are you going to become famous? I don't know. It's going to happen though. Hey, peeps. Hey, peeps. Hey, peeps. My amazing friend, Teresa Romer. Hi, how are you? Oh, she's in the closet. I'm shook. With all hope of being a real housewife down the drain, Teresa turns to the only avenue for fame that she had access to, the internet. She built an entire persona for herself as she showed off her lavish home on Instagram. In summer of 2018, her Instagram had gained 17,000 to 20,000 followers in that month alone. But even though her follower count increased, her engagement remained the same, and nothing had happened to warrant such a spike in followers. So summer 2018's follower spike still remains a mystery. Someone asked Teresa on the Zoom course, how did she grow her social media platform? So, so Teresa stated verbatim, just like what I have done all my life, slow, steady, I'm a brand, I have products, candles, pillows, 
books, etc. I'm starting a cosmetic brand and I need real followers, not fake followers, so that I can get sales. 2018 was also around the time that she started getting brand deals, mostly with flat tummy tea. But what about Teresa Romer's YouTube channel? Well, as of 2016, Teresa had been uploading pretty random content to YouTube, like fitness videos and promotions for her book, Naked. She also did some minor vlogging, but she started consistently vlogging in July 2016 with Teresa Romer Lifestyle and Fashion. She even launched a fitness clothing line. We're in our NI30D athletic wear. Go to the website, get yours now, NI30D.com. However, it doesn't seem to be available anymore as the NI30D website fails to load and the Instagram page for the brand is now private. In 2018, she started a YouTube show called Conversations in the Closet, where she would invite guests into her closet, ask them questions, and find a way to make them about herself. This is where we see her first collaboration with a drama channel when she invites Rich Lux on the show. And there were many, many, many more collaborations after that with Rich. They even went to DragCon together where Teresa Romer photoshopped her own DragCon advertisement for walking around. <laughs> Anyway, like I was saying, she began collaborating with more beauty influencers and drama channels, including, but not limited to, Nick Snyder, Jen Gerard, and Anphrodite. So whether it was YouTube or Instagram, I worked hard for two years to reach 100,000 subs on YouTube. The thing that she did not acknowledge is that she did not reach 100,000 subs until she collaborated with, with larger influencers. But Teresa didn't stop there. She had an idea that was ultimately a major downfall to her internet persona, the drama channel meet and greets. Never pay Walking down the runway Tight dress, I must confess Bitches do what I say Hair flip, never pay Walking down the runway Tight dress, I must confess Bitches do what I say Walk past, shoulders back Strutting with the girly slack Walk past, shoulders back Strutting with the girly slack Walk past, shoulders back Strutting with the girly slack Walk past, shoulders back Strutting with the girly slack Controversy seems to follow Teresa wherever she goes, and YouTube has been no exception to that. While she has always been criticized for flaunting her wealth, 2020 was a little different. She was finding herself in drama with friend, uh, uh, other creators. Dustin Daly being the first who collabed with Teresa to call her out for comparing c to the flu while sitting in her $7 million mansion completely out of touch with how this was really going to impact our world. This back and forth with Dustin would be just the start of Teresa's falling out with the drama community. On May 10th of this year, Teresa did an interview with Sergio Liberis. He asked her if she has YouTube friends and if she believes in YouTube friendship. You're doing a collaboration. It's a, it's a business deal, okay? It's, it's not a friend, it's not a friendship, it's a business deal. Hearing this part of Teresa's interview hurt Nick Snyder of The Viewer's Voice as he had considered her a friend and was even part of a reality style show she was doing on her channel. This was the straw that broke the camel's back and he uploaded a video on Mother's Day calling Teresa out as a social climber. Nick discussed the 2019 holiday party. Teresa was selling tickets for $100 to the public to come party with their favorite influencers. How the hell did you market that party at 300 of the top influencers went bitch there was barely 150 people there a lot of people started to see the footage from around the party and they were like were they hiding this brought nick to his next point the infamous meet and greet much like the party tickets were being sold for the meet and greet event at Teresa's mansion with profits going to charity because there's a time frame that this meet and greet was i don't remember what it was was it one to four one to three twelve to three i don't know exactly what the time was it turned out after i was being rushed back into the back room i was being rushed back in there because everyone was getting kicked out before this event was even supposed to be over according to Paige, Teresa told them off for spending time with the subscribers who paid to be there while this was happening security was kicking people out an hour before the event was set to end once nick spoke out others felt comfortable to speak out as well glowing beauty discussed her experience so did nosy house frau and sherry hellcat even explained that not only did Teresa kick out people who paid and guests she even kicked out Jen Gerard of Gerard Cosmetics, who was actually one of the sponsors for the meet and greet. Teresa did respond to this in her video. He stressed in that video how I had mishandled a meet and greet at my house. No, I did not. You know, that meet and greet was from one to three. And at four o'clock, I said, you know, guys, enough's enough. This meet and greet was supposed to be two hours and it's now been three, almost three and a half. We need to shut it down. But per witness accounts in the advertised flyer, this is incorrect. Teresa also flexed her lawyer muscles. The five times I've probably been around him uh, in this past year since I've known him, 
I've always been cordial to him. I've always been nice to him. We've filmed together. We've filmed together. He signed to NDA. Nick did end up receiving a cease and desist, but he just went ahead and lit it on fire saying the NDA he signed was for The Interns, a show on Teresa's channel. He was fully allowed to speak on the meet and greet. Teresa was also called out for the absolutely atrocious comments about Nick she was liking under her video. Teresa has also been called out for her out of touch comments. On June 1st, she uploaded a video called Black Lives Matter, where she spoke briefly on the protests and her stash pillow even made a cameo. She was criticized for the thumbnail title and promoting her products in the description box while not having any information for charities or petitions. She did end up changing the title. A few weeks later on June 19th, Teresa was criticized for posting a photo dressed up as a police officer saying shopping is not a crime. This was posted during the height of the protests. With all the controversy surrounding Teresa recently, her social media and her YouTube channel has definitely taken a hit and recently someone asked her about that and she responded. It's funny but I'm also sad that she said this. And Teresa said, I lost viewers because a drama channel caused all kinds of drama that was not needed and my viewers dropped off because of it. The drama community ultimately helped build Teresa's channel up and the way she left a bad taste in the community's mouth is what has led to a bit of a downfall for her channel. So what is Teresa Romer up to now? Yet again, she's trying to launch a reality show like The Help from 2012, although this time she's calling it The Interns. We are entering week four and we've had two people drop out in less than a week. Mm. Mm. I think Naisha should be going home because, well, the Teresa Romer brand isn't a crop top with your gun hanging out. One way or another, Teresa is going to have her reality show. I did not know when. I couldn't put it down on paper what year it would happen, but I never lost sight of it. I've never lost sight of anything that I go after. And that includes something really big this year that I'm working on. Like, I've been working for eight, nine years for something like what I hope is going to happen this year. I'm not even gonna say hope. I know it's going to happen. Teresa recently also announced that she's starting mentor Zoom classes for $25. Hey guys, just wanted to announce we are going to start having Zoom classes. Um, yeah, you heard it here, Zoom classes. So it's all going to be about health, wealth, and relationships. So if there's anything that you are trying to learn about your health, your wealth, or relationships, you're not going to want to miss these Zoom classes. However, YouTuber Vice Versa was one of the six to seven people who purchased her Zoom course, and here's what he had to say. It was the worst $25 that I had ever spent in my whole entire life. Out of the several thousand people that she marketed this program to, only seven or eight people sh paid for this one course. I was one of them. So that means around seven or six people attended this class. I went into this whole entire ordeal hopeful that Teresa would offer some type of substance to this course. The course started out with a course Teresa providing her life story in which she has done multiple of dozens of times on her YouTube channel. It was just very, very, very repetitive. It was very like cliche, very like, why? Teresa has been through several ups and downs throughout her life and career. Whether it be scandals, failed product lines, public falling out, failed meet and greets and parties, or scrapped reality shows, she's always remained consistent. And no matter how you feel about Teresa, she never stops. No matter what truths she's embellished, she continues to press on. No matter what horribly awful, embarrassing thing happens to her, she presses through, and to that, I tip my hat to you.